back uh, that have uh, serious medical needs and the demands are quite great. So there's a lot of families who are really struggling to have the resources to be with their, with their uh, soldiers. And this program, uh, Americans want to do something, they want to be part of it process of bringing our lawyers home and showing our appreciation. So I think there's a there's a need, plus there's a real desire to do something about uh, our, our military families. Many families that need to come to our region in order to be with their loved ones. So it will help in regards to hotel rooms available in our region so military families can be together. Let's, let's tell you, this is a national program. This is a way nationwide all can come together and do something in a tangible way to help military families deal with the transition back to life here. My name is Dave Coker, and I have the privilege of serving as president of Fisher House Foundation. I'd like to thank each of you for being here today as we officially kick off our Hotels for Heroes program. And it's good to be among friends. Uh, with us, we have Joe McInerney and Catherine Potter from the American Hotel and Lodging Association. Uh, we have Kevin Carnes uh, from the BWI uh, Four Points End, who was instrumental in helping to uh, create some energy and awareness about this program. Uh, we have Daniel Berlan from uh, Choice Hotels. Uh, with us on the Fisher side, uh, we're pleased to have with us Ms. Tora Fisher. Uh, Tora is uh, our newest trustee uh, and helped us uh, with one of our most important accomplishments, and that was dedicating the first Fisher House we built over at Long Shore Medical, <coughs> Medical Center, supporting our troops overseas. Uh, we're also very pleased to have with us uh, Staff Sergeant Chaz Allen and the Allen family, otherwise known as Team Allen. Chaz, thank you all for being here. Jessica. At the heart of the Fisher House program is our network of 57 Fisher Houses across the country and in Germany, which provide a home away from home for our military and veterans' families who find themselves in the midst of a personal medical crisis far from home, and to support their loved ones who are receiving specialized care. We have learned much from the families who have graced our houses, and part of that is identifying needs that otherwise are going unmet. We learned several years ago that transportation that would allow the family and friends to get together and support their loved one was a barrier for families to participate in the healing process. The Hero Miles program was created to support that need. And to date, we have provided more than 30,000 tickets to reunite loved ones at their wounded warrior's bedside. We've also learned that even though we have 57 houses across the country, there remains a great need for additional lodging. And that is why Hotels for Heroes is so important. We will be able to use the same model. Instead of using donated frequent flyer miles, we'll be using donated hotel points. Those points will allow us to provide free lodging for those who are supporting their wounded, injured, or ill military service member or loved one, receiving treatment at military and VA medical centers across the country. We will be working with the to validate the need for lodging. Once the need has been validated, we will work to identify the right partner hotel that would be most convenient for that family and arrange for their lodging. Guest families will still need to take care of some of the incidental expenses, but the cost of lodging will be free. I'm pleased to say that we have already provided 45 nights of lodging through Hotels for Heroes. And I anticipate within the next few months that number will climb to supporting hundreds of families and hundreds of nights a month. There are many people who have worked very hard to make this program a reality. First, let me thank Senator Ben Cardin and Congressman Des Ruppersberger for their support and leadership throughout this process. We also need to thank our, our valued hotel partners for their participation and their commitment to this special program. And of course, their loyal customers, people from all over this country, 
who have shared and will be sharing their points to provide the resources for the rooms, which will bless the families we're so privileged to serve. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Bruce Phillips, Tish Stroke, Cindy Campbell, and Ryan Gaughan on my staff who have helped make this day possible and done a marvelous job in preparation. It is now my privilege to, to introduce a man who believes government has a duty to improve the lives of all Americans, from expanding access to health care to boosting job growth, to making home ownership affordable and improving the environment. Senator Cardin is a recognized leader with a record of legislative success. Senator Cardin also believes that we have a sacred duty to provide for the men and women who serve in our armed forces. He has a great faith in the generosity of the American people, and that is one of the reasons why he is here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Ben Cardin. In the lives of so many military families, if you haven't been to a Fisher House, you really need to be um, see what they are providing to military families. We all know that we want to show our support, our respect, our love for those who have served our nation. Many are coming back with special needs, our wounded warriors. And we know that when a soldier comes back and needs medical attention, that a large part of that medical attention is support from their own families. But it's difficult for families to get together. There are commitments, there are financial sacrifices, etc. And uh, a couple years ago, uh, Congressman Ruppersberger noticed a need. Noticed a need that uh, soldiers and their families were being sort of stranded. And they had to take their own resources in order to pay for transportation to be united. And it was Congressman Ruppersberger who understood that Americans, given the opportunity, would demonstrate their, their tangible support for our military, for what they've done for this nation. And the Miles for Heroes program was initiated under Congressman Rubensberger's leadership and was very, very successful working with the Fisher House so that we could unite the warrior with family so that we could all show our appreciation. It's been an honor to work with Congressman Ruppersberger as we now have taken that to the next step. And that is, of course, Hotels for Heroes. And that gives us an opportunity for all of us to show our appreciation for our military families. As David's pointed out, we, we now know a need. Yes, we have Fisher houses, but there are not enough rooms. And they're not in every community that, where we have soldiers being treated, where families need to come together. So the Hotel for Heroes fills a gap that we currently have by allowing families the opportunity financially to be able to be close to their loved ones as part of our commitment to do everything we can to help our returning warriors. That's what this is about. And I, I, Congressman Ruppersberg and I introduced legislation. I'm proud to tell you it passed pretty quickly. That's a little unusual in this Congress to see something pass at all, but quickly is it's, it's, it's very unusual. We did it because it's bipartisan, because my colleagues in the Senate, Dutch's con colleagues in the House, understood that this was a way in which not only could we set up a mechanism to help our uh, returning warriors, but then Americans can do something. We all want to do something. And given the opportunity, Americans will respond. Will respond. So I want to also underscore that we couldn't do this without our partners. And, to Debbie Marriott Harrison, I want to tell you firsthand, I want to thank you, our, our host for today's meeting here at the Marriott. But what you have done is show the example in advertising this program to your customers and patrons and the type of response that we've already seen. Uh, to me, it demonstrates that we can really make this program change the landscape of how we treat our wounded warriors and their families when they come back to America. But I want to thank all of our hotel partners, the Marriott, uh, Wyndham, Marianne, Best Western, Choice, and Starwood, the hotel, Starwood Hotels, all are participating. And you'll see this public service announcement here. You'll see all their names listed on it. I know David's prepared to, to uh, revise this at any time to add additional uh, hotel chains to, to, the, uh, to the mix. 
But I particularly want to thank uh, Team Allen, the Allen family. I, I think they will show firsthand. We all appreciate the sacrifices that you've made for our country. And we say that. But we want to do everything we can to help you and your family uh, as you come back and help build this great nation, the United States of America. But you know firsthand you can't do it alone. And the injuries that you sustained were extremely serious. But having a supporting family at your side made that recovery a lot more bearable and a lot easier. So we thank you for being here, not just for the service that you provided to our country, but showing firsthand that we are talking about people in our community and their families that are touched by what we can do today to make your lives a little bit easier. You honor us with your presence, and we're proud to be your partner in providing this service to those who served our nation. Congressman C.A. Dutch Rupertsburg, there is known as a common sense consensus builder. A lifelong resident of Baltimore, Congressman Rupertsburg has served in public office for more than 27 years. He is currently serving in his fifth term in the U.S. House of Representatives for the citizen, citizens of Maryland's second district. Last year, he was named the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, where he helps to keep our country secure by fighting terrorism and providing our war fighters with the intelligence they need. Congressman Rupersberger also serves on the House Armed Services Committee, a post that has only served to strengthen his record of supporting our veterans through programs like Operation Hero Miles and Hotels for Heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Rupersberger. Fisher House, uh, what a great organization that helps our men and women, our troops. Uh, you know, you should know that Dave has over his family, 100 years of military service. Uh, and he himself has retired from the U.S. Army and has 31 years experience in nonprofit management. And the Fisher House has done an outstanding job. Thank you for the partnerships and for helping our troops. We really appreciate what you do. Also, my friend Ben. Uh, ben Cardin, I've known for all of my years in public service. He's a great person. Uh, he's a great friend. We work, work very well together on numerous issues, including this. And I think Ben's belief is that government exists to improve the lives of all Americans. And uh, we're really happy to have you here, Ben. I'm glad we can partner in this, this issue. Uh, I also want to express my gratitude to Marriott's headquarters in Maryland. Uh, so we're thrilled that they were the first hotel company to sign on to participate in Hotel for Heroes. Uh, Debbie Marriott ha Harrison, sitting here in the front row, uh, you know, was an instrumental part of that. In addition to overseeing the company's entire government affairs efforts, she frequently champions the company's involvement in public health, mental health, and education causes. Marriott now has more than 3,700 hotels in 73 countries with over 300,000 employees worldwide. So I think your participation will really set the bar here. Uh, by participating in this program, we also have a Wyndham uh, American Inn, Best Western, Choice, and Starwood Hotels. Uh, they're also demonstrating your commitment to our wounded warriors. Uh, your efforts are going to go a long way uh, toward the recovery of our troops injured on the front lines. Uh, by agreeing to participate in this program, you're setting the standard for the rest of your industry. And we're going to have the entire industry come together on this plan. Also want to acknowledge, is Joe McCarney here today? Or are you representing Joe? Well, Joe, stand up. I mean, you can be Joe, President and Chief. Uh, you, are, you are, I see. And you're Chief, uh, President Chief Executive Officer of America's Hotels and Lodging Association. Joe and his staff uh, were instrumental in helping us in the beginning to get the uh, word out about this program to their members. They've been so tremendously supportive. Thank you again, Joe, for being involved and being here again today. I'm glad you're here. Stand up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a special day for our troops and wounded words. Uh, when I first came into Congress in 2003, I created a program called Hero Miles, uh, which really was put into place to enable troops stationed in Iraq or Afghanistan to fly home on leave for free through frequent flyer miles donated by the American public. Uh, that's, and what happened basically is that the troops would come back for their two-week R&R. &R. They, were, they were dumped off at BWI Airport, which uh, Ben and I both represent, and told they had to fly their way home. Well, if you lived in Baltimore, it was fine, but if you were going to go to California or Arizona, you had to pay a lot of money. And we couldn't, at that time, get the administration to pay for it, so we came up with a common sense idea of Operation Hero Miles. And uh, really, the, the, for the public to donate the, their frequent flyer miles to help these troops. And I just want to say this, um, in six months, 
we had over 5 million brick and fire miles that were donated. And that goes to show you that the public were just finding a way to help the men and women protecting our country who are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan and other areas in the, in the theater. Now, let's fast forward to last May. My wife Kay and Senator Card's wife Myrna were at an event for an organization that works to minimize the effects of military families and how, what they are facing. Uh, Kay and Myrna felt very strongly that military families needed to be focused on. You know, we have people that are stationed uh, in, in different parts and they're moved around every three years, it seems, that these children are going to school, these families. And then when, when Iraq came, when we started Iraq and Afghanistan, we had a more serious situation that these men and women were leaving for a year and not seeing their loved ones. So when they started, they were starting to focus on helping these families. Uh, but we had an event, kind of like this, Ben and I came to, 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 break, to start the program, and it was at the Four Points BWI Sheriff. I have to give everybody credit, by the way. And uh, they were approached by the general manager there, Kevin Carnes. Kevin, are you here today? It's a shame because Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, was really the individual. He had a discussion with, with Myrna and Kay and suggested uh, that we take the Hero Miles philosophy or program so that we can help more troops and their families save on travel costs by enabling Americans to donate their hotel rewards points. After that, uh, we came together. Ben and I thought it would be great to move forward with this program. We sponsored legislation, uh, bipartisan legislation, authorizing the program, which we were able to get passed in December. Can you imagine that? We passed a bipartisan bill in the House and the Senate in December, and that is very positive for our men and women that we're there to help who are serving our country. Um, we then got to work at recruiting the hotels, and now finally, uh, we are ready to ask the American people to start donating these, these points. Now, these donations will go a long way toward the recovery of our wounded warriors, as the Allen family, with their two daughters here, beautiful daughters, <clears throat> um, can probably testify, sometimes the best medicine is your family by your side. When you go off to serve your country and you come back and you're injured, you have serious problems, and you're in a hospital for a long period of time or in rehabilitation, it's so important for you to have your family close to you. And that's what the Fisher House has done, but we know that there are not enough Fisher Houses to, to have everyone come and be with their family. That's what this program is about, uh, to, to move and to get started. Uh, Chaz, Jessica, again, thank you uh, first for your service, for, and believe me, it's about the families and the spouses too. And, and you all come together as a team to help your husband do what he needs to do to, to help himself and also working to get a job and all of those, those issues. Um, you know, the, uh, I hear that already there are many, many points have been donated both by our corporate partners and Americans who have gotten their early win of the program. And believe me, that is awesome that this has come together so quickly. Americans share a powerful desire to show our gratitude to our troops, to our veterans and their families. So I know this program is going to be a huge success, and I thank everyone who's been a part of making it a reality. Go USA! I threw out the term that we have done 30,000 tickets, and, and Congressman, you mentioned that, that you had collected 5 million miles. Those 30,000 tickets which we have issued represents a donation of 1.5 billion frequent flyer miles to make that possible. Now, Debbie Marriott Harrison is the Senior Vice President for Government Affairs at Marriott International and coordinates outreach to government officials on behalf of the Bethesda-based company. We're pleased to have her with us today to talk about Marriott's participation. Debbie. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today. Um, and thank you so much for the kind words and the warm welcome. It was a team effort, though, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank my colleague, T.J. Maloney, for coordinating this across the Marriott Enterprise and working with our rewards people. It was, it was a team effort, and we were all very happy to participate. It's really a pleasure to be here on behalf of Marriott International and the Marriott family today to pledge our support for the Hotels for Heroes. We are really proud to be one of the first hotel companies to um, join with Fisher House on this great project. Our company has a deep respect for Fisher House's work to help its mem our members of the armed services and veterans and their families. It's a real honor to be able to partner with them. 
and it's a real honor to have Team Allen here today with us. Really appreciate you being here. Um, and I feel like you're a special guest in my second home. This is one of, this is the first J.W. Marriott Hotel that was built in honor of my grandfather. So they took his name, J.W. Marriott, and this is the very first one. And so this is a special place for us. And uh, no one was more patriotic than my grandfather or my father. My father also sends his greetings today and, uh, and his best wishes. Uh, so this is a very special place and we welcome you here. Um, I want to give special thanks to Congressman Ruppersberger and Senator Cardin. As you all know, our corporate headquarters is headquartered in Maryland. It's our home state, and these are our home state representatives on the congressional team, and we're really appreciative of what you've done. <clears throat> and we're very, and we're really um, when we received the calls from their offices about Hotels for Heroes, it just seemed like a natural thing to partner with, and we really <coughs> jumped on this project. I personally have visited Fisher House a few years ago. We took our church youth group to visit Fisher House when it was at the old Walter Reed um, Hospital. And uh, it was one of those experiences I will never forget. It was very touching and I was very touched by the uh, perseverance, positive attitude, and the dedication that the soldiers had and their families had and their medical team had in trying to get them better and to get them healed. We talked to many of the injured soldiers and learned about their stories and their families and where they were from. The one that touched me the most was one that didn't have a mark on him. And he could remember everything up until the time he was walking along a sidewalk and his sergeant stepped on an IED, was killed, and he was thrown across the street and his head landed in the side of a truck. He had traumatic brain injury, and even though you couldn't tell there was anything wrong with him, he said he couldn't remember what he'd eaten for breakfast. He, couldn't, he said he wouldn't ever remember talking to us. He wouldn't remember what he had for lunch. And he said to me, how am I going to have any kind of a life? I can't hold a job. I can't have a relationship. And uh, he says, I don't know what's going to become of me. And uh, it was really, really touching. And it was very difficult to hear some of the stories. But it was wonderful to be there, surrounded by all the positivity and the perseverance, as I said, and the great work that these teams do in helping these our soldiers get better. We know that Fisher House does great work, and we're happy to open the doors of our 3,000 U.S. hotels to them and the military heroes that, they, that, um, <clears throat> that have served for us and for our country. Um, we are really happy to provide them with the Marriott hospitality. This year, Marriott is celebrating its 85th anniversary, and as a company, we worked really hard to build our spirit to serve culture. And we love giving back and giving to our communities. I know I speak for the thousands of associates when I say that we appreciate the hard work and dedication of our troops and what they do to protect our country and our freedoms. Thank you very much. And now we are pleased that our 38 million Marriott Rewards members will also be able to show their appreciation by donating points to Hotels for Heroes. And I'm really happy to say that just since May, when we launched the program, we've had 24 million points donated by our customers. That translates to 3,000 <laughs> Just since May. So that's pretty incredible. We have wonderful customers. And as you all know, especially from the, um, the, the tsunami, the earthquake in Haiti, the uh, tsunami in Japan, Americans are the most generous people on the face of the earth, and, it, and I'm really proud. We are really proud to have customers that will be so generous and donate their points like that. So, um, Marion is thrilled to join Hotels for Heroes. I know our rewards team is looking forward to working with Fisher House. You can go on to MarriottRewards.com to redeem your points or donate your points. And um, we want to thank you, Fisher House, the Senator, Congressman, and for giving us this unique way to serve and to give back into our community. And thank you to our media partners in the room, who I know will also help us get the word out about this great cause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie, very much. Mark Nickpon is the Vice President of Marketing Distribution and the Chief Information Officer for the Minnesota-based Americ and Hotels. The Americ and brand has 200 mid-scale hotels located predominantly in the Midwest. Mark. I want to thank you. Uh, we at uh, Americ and are very uh, excited and honored to be part of the 
Hotel Street Girls co ed. Um, we are a Minneapolis based uh, mid scale brand in the upper Midwest. And as a mid scale brand, uh, we have a legacy of being caring and responsive not only to the needs of our guests but also the communities uh, that we serve. And uh, really, it's, it's part of who we are, it's part of our DNA. Uh, we are also a very patriotic brand. And in fact, uh, we have established a tradition in, in our brand of supporting uh, the military uh, through our American CARES program. In 2011, at our annual conference in Las Vegas, we gathered together our hotel general managers and our owners, and we packed care packages uh, that were sent to uh, the troops overseas, serving overseas. Uh, and this year, uh, we assembled uh, bags as well as bicycles and uh, other gift items that went to uh, family members who were awaiting return of their members from overseas. And inside the bags were items uh, that were designed really for the families to kind of uh, re-engage, uh, sort of things like board games, things that they could, activities that they could do uh, to spend time together. And as part of that program then, we do something at our annual conference uh, where we get uh, everyone together, uh, then we then encourage our hotels to uh, then take this to their local hotel. And in the fall of the year, uh, they kind of duplicate the event that we do uh, at, our, at our annual conference uh, at the local level. So they go out and they recruit uh, not only their guests, but also members of their community to, to donate items. And uh, in the case of the care packages, then they, uh, they had an event at their hotel where they pack those up and we sent those over to uh, to troops serving overseas. Uh, since uh, the announcement of the uh, Hotels for Heroes program, we've done a soft launch uh, to our Easy Awards Lodge program members. Uh, and it's only been now just a couple of weeks that we did that, but already we have hundreds of room nights that have been donated by our members, and we're uh, very excited about uh, more of pushing this forward, uh, and more formally announcing it, and uh, getting a lot more uh, hotel nights donated. So. Thank you very much. Now, just as a test to see how badly Mark wanted to get here last night at 9.30, his flight was canceled, and he still made it. So, Mark, thanks for joining us. It was on January 22nd of last year when Staff Sergeant Chaz Allen was injured when he stepped on a pressure plate IED in Afghanistan. He immediately lost both legs and broke his elbow and was evacuated through Kandahar to Walter Reed for treatment, where he was joined by his wife, Jessica. Since that time, Staff Sergeant Allen has been supported by Team Allen in their pursuit of the new normal. They receive support through the Hero Miles program throughout Chaz's recovery, and the program on which Hotels for Heroes is based. Jessica, would you and Chaz come forward to discuss what this type of support phone off and I self-confess my cell phone is still on vibrate. Um, I just decided that if it was that important to leave a voicemail and I'd get back to you when I could because trying to deal with a Wounded Warrior schedule is sometimes impossible. But my all-time favorite phone call was from Tish Strips and I hate that she's not here today because I'd love to, to, for her to hear what I have to say about her. Um, when this happened I didn't want the girls to see him it was scary and I can only imagine what it was like to be that small and see your dad in that bed and so luckily he was coherent a lot which was quite surprising and we developed a plan and I explained to him that I couldn't combine the world I just couldn't do it I couldn't bring the girl there it's just too much for me and so luckily we were the biggest blessing of all was we were stationed at Fort Campbell and I'm from Nashville so all of my family was in less than an hour's drive so I called my sister I called my mom and we involved Chaz in the decision and he gives a thumbs up, and I came up with a plan of traveling every week. Every Wednesday, I was in Nashville International and uh, Ronald Reagan. And I'd take the girls to school on, on a Wednesday and then jump on a plane and get to him, thanks to time zone changes, that was quite convenient. I would get to him about lunchtime, and I would spend a week with him, and then the following Wednesday, I would, set, I would get him all settled, and then I would jump on another plane, and I would get home in time for the girls to get off the school bus. And I thought, this is crazy, this is crazy. And I went down to the Soldier Family Assistance Center and I proposed my plan to them. And the girl said, yeah, you're, you're crazy. Like, who would want to do this? I said, you don't understand. They need to go to school. They need to have a life. They need to be with their friends. They need to go to Girl Scouts. 
they need to go to dance. They need to have what they have right now because he can't be the dad to play, like, play soccer in the yard right now. He needs to heal. I can play. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so I went back to his room and I, I, I had the whole thing scheduled out and I said, you know, if someone can help me, we have an emergency fund, I can pay for the rest of these plane tickets. I just need as much help as I possibly can get because I need that emergency fund because I don't know what's coming. And I get this phone call and it's from this lady and she uh, she introduced herself as Tistrups from Hero Miles and I said, I'm so sorry, I, I'm not really, I'm kind of, you lost me there. And she said, Fisher House. I was like, okay, I know what that is. And she said, well, this is what we do. And I said, okay. And she said, well, they're telling me that this is what you need. And I said, yes, ma'am, the flights. I want you to pick out which flight's going to work best for your schedule. And this is what Hero Miles is designed for. It's for cases just like yours. And when the girls are ready, we want to bring the girls to be with their dad. We want that privilege. And I said, okay. And then before the girls were brought to us, we went to our social worker and got a room at Fisher House. So we stayed in Fisher House from March to August of 2000. And instead of taking our girls to kind of an informal place, we were able to reunite them with their dad at the Fisher House living room. And it was, it was a great moment. So rather than seeing their dad in a hospital room, they were able to see their dad in a home away from home. It was a little, little bit better than you could imagine. Um, lots of emotions, of course, but thanks to Fisher House, we've been able to make our new normal as best as possible. And I know they can tell you all these numbers of the plane tickets and things and the hotel rooms, but I'm going to tell you right now, you'll never know how many lives are touched by Fisher House. There's no way. You don't know how many people are waiting at the other end of the airport to get that person off the plane. You don't know how many family members. There might be one person booked in that hotel room. More than likely, there's a grandma or an aunt or a friend that's staying as well. And you're not going to ever have the, ha the head count of how many lives Fisher House has touched. It's absolutely amazing. It, it, there's not a better example of paying it forward than the Fisher House Foundation. And we can't thank them enough for helping us make our new normal what, what we have today. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Chaz. Um, and, and while it's always good to use metrics and, and, and